Hi, my name is Alex with ATEC Tech, Tech Tutorials and today I'm going to be talking to you about three common mistakes you're probably making when populating your backlog. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, make sure you drop a like, and if you have any questions about anything that I cover in this video, please let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into Jira now. Okay, so here I am back on a backlog i am in a just a regular scrum style of board within jira and i have an active sprint going on right now and i also have a backlog and so i want to talk to you about common mistakes that you're probably making when you're populating this backlog so there's a couple of ways to actually get issues into your backlog the first way is to actually hit the create button and so if you do the create button and you create a story or a task or a bug those issues are going to show up in your backlog, which is fine. That's not a common mistake. What is a common mistake is teams want to see their subtasks. Sometimes each one of these issues have a subtask. And as you probably know by now, or if you don't know, let me, let me give you a little spoiler here. You can't actually create a subtask using the create button. And so the way subtasks are typically created is, is at the story level or at the task or bug, whichever of those three you want to pick, you can come in here and create the click on the sub create subtask button and that will create a subtask number one okay and so now that you have that created you're probably wondering well where's my subtask i created a subtask it's clearly here it's fjc number 22 but it doesn't show up in the backlog and so mistake number one is expecting to see your subtask in the backlog is not something that jira is designed to do so you want to make sure you alter your mindset a little bit because if you're following a plain vanilla Jira or Agile playbook, you probably know that you have epics, stories, and tasks. And the stories explain what needs to be built with the tasks explaining how to build it. The problem here is Jira will not show you those subtasks in the backlog. They're going to be nested underneath the individual stories but it gets very challenging to basically break down your story into a series of subtasks, a series of steps or checklists, if you will, that actually help you understand the complexity and all the intricacies and details that are going to go into delivering the value of the story. But you just can't see it in your backlog. So how do you circumvent this? How do you go about this? Well, plain and simple, you can't. You can't add the subtask into this backlog. It's just not something you're going to do. So there's two ways that I would recommend you do this. One is enable story points for your subtasks and give them the subtask there and then roll up that number. There's a, a rule that we can create. I can show you. Let me know in the comments. Drop a like. Hit that subscribe button. There's a rule that we can create that will basically auto sum up all of the story points at the subtask level and display them at the story level. And so that way, when you're at least planning your sprint, you have a better appreciation of saying, oh, this story is a little bit more involved than I initially thought because I thought it was going to be like a five or whatever five represents for you. But realistically, it's a whole lot more because there's a lot more scope that I just wasn't uh, accounting for. So that's one way. The other way is to, if the subtasks are big enough, if they're not things that can be done in a couple of hours, but there's things that are taking you days or even a week to complete, I recommend that you break those subtasks and actually promote them up to a story. And I, I do firmly believe that it's better to have more stories that are more descriptive. Maybe you tie them back up to an epic so you can show commonalities. Maybe you tie them together using the linked issues field so that you can show the relationship between those uh, stories. But I think it's better to have the stories on the backlog and, and written in such a way that actually help you understand the scope and, and what's being asked at each story than to put things in a subtask or, or just ignoring it altogether. But just know that if you're trying to see the subtask in the backlog, it ain't going to be possible. Mistake number two is trying to see the epics. If you go and create an epic in Jira, you're not going to see them in your backlog. You can, however, do a couple of things. One, you can click on this epics panel on the left. A lot of people don't understand this and a lot of people don't even see the epics panel on the left. But if you click on it, Jira will show you your epics that are in scope for this particular board. And 
essentially from here you can click on it and it's going to highlight and essentially just hide everything that is not um, labeled with that epic. So you can see here, if I click on this great epic, let me change the color a little bit so I'm not repeating the same colors. Just, just for illustration purposes, so I'm going to have a, a salmon, purple, green, and blue. And so I click, click on this green, and I maybe have to hit refresh because I should have turned green. You'll see that these items are green. If I deselect it, it shows me everything, but I can kind of hone in and, and really just zoom in on just a particular epic. And so that's, that's another common mistake where people are trying to see their epics, but they want to see the actual epic itself. So in this case, you'd want to see FJC-15, but that's not always possible. You, The only way that Jira is going to show it to you here in the backlog is going to be by expanding this epics panel and then clicking on it or, or visualizing it here. Or if you don't expand the epics panel, you clear all your filters and your stories do belong to an epic, you'll see them in this colored label on the right side of your issue. So this is another great way of, of seeing which epic the item belongs to, but not actually seeing the epic itself. Now you're probably wondering, why can't I just see the epics? Well, I don't know the answer, but my suspicion I should rephrase that. I don't know the official answer, but my suspicion is an epic by default should be something that is too big for any one team to do or one person to do. And it's usually a multi-week thing. It's something that is going to go beyond a single sprint. Because of that, I think Jira is just trying to help you with your behavior. Right? I think Jira is trying to help you think smaller. And it's saying this epic is too massive anyways for you to be successful with it at face value. So why don't you decompose it and break it down to smaller stories, tie them all back up to me as the epic, and then go plan that workout because the probability of success is going to be significantly higher if you do that versus if I were to bring in an epic that's just going to roll from sprint to sprint to sprint because the scope of the work is just so massive that there's just a lot of ambiguity and stuff like that. So a lot of bad things will happen if you actually try to do the epic, right? Because of its inherent nature. So that's the mistake number two. And then mistake number three that you're doing here in the backlog is not ranking your backlog. Not every issue is created equal. And Jira gives you the power to actually rank your backlog. And what that means is you can take items that are at the bottom of the backlog. You can move them up. Now, if you have a really long backlog, maybe you have two, three, four hundred issues. You can right click on an issue and send it to the top of the backlog. Conversely, you can take an issue that's at the top of your backlog, <clears throat> maybe you're working with your product owner, and you determine, you know what? This story isn't so important. Maybe we can defer this a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And so you can just take a story and go, I'm gonna send you right back to the bottom of the backlog. So that's another cool little feature that's built in to uh, the backlog, which you're probably, it's a mistake you're doing, right? If, if you're just taking from the top and moving it in, or, even worse, if you're just searching for a story because you know it's in here somewhere and you're then bringing it into a story, into your sprint, that is a mistake you're making. You want to be ranking your backlog. You want to be having these conversations with your product owner because requirements can change frequently. And that's the beauty of Agile. This is why we do Agiles, to be able to be receptive of those changes and make and accommodate and change the plan accordingly. So when you come in to plan your next sprint, your backlog should be groomed and ranked which basically means you only have at the top at least the highest value work going to deliver the biggest bang for your buck for your team and so make sure you are not doing or violating one of these three common mistakes that i see teams do and hopefully my tips will help you out and be a little bit more productive with injura if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe drop a like share with your friends and family and if you have any questions about anything I covered today, make sure you leave me a comment in the section below. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one.